Rishi Sunak is now Britain's new Prime Minister. I'm sure you have seen the memes already. They are hilarious. But the situation which Sunak finds himself in is no laughing matter. He inherits a fractured party and a broken economy. He is now the leader of a country that is clearly in decline. There is no doubt that Sunak's rise is historic. We're not denying that. He is Britain's first Prime Minister of Indian origin. The youngest Prime Minister in 200 years. And the first Hindu Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. But if he has to leave a legacy behind, he must confront those daunting challenges. Sunak himself acknowledged the scale of the challenges that he faces. Listen in. Some mistakes were made. Not born of ill will or bad intentions. Quite the opposite, in fact. But mistakes nonetheless. And I have been elected as leader of my party and your Prime Minister, in part, to fix them. And that work begins immediately. Some mistakes were made, he said. No prizes for guessing whom he's talking about here. His political rival, Liz Truss, her mistakes are the reason why Sunak finds himself in 10 Downing Street today in the first place. Truss delivered a farewell speech today before leaving. She used the opportunity to defend her rather short tenure and offer some advice to Sunak. Listen in. From my time as Prime Minister, I am more convinced than ever that we need to be bold and confront the challenges that we face. Our country continues to battle through a storm. But I believe in Britain. I believe in the British people. And I know that brighter days lie ahead. Thank you. Truss has stepped down 45 days after taking the job. She resigned on Thursday, just five days back. Within three days, the Conservatives named her successor. Clearly, Britain's ruling party wanted to forget the turbulent tenure of Liz Truss, like a bad dream. The Conservatives had time till Friday this week to pick a new leader, but the MPs finished the job on Sunday itself. The rules of the election were simple. Those who wanted to contest needed the backing of at least 100 MPs. The Conservatives have 357 MPs in the House of Commons. After the MPs pick the candidates, the Conservative Party membership would then get a chance to vote and pick a new leader. That was supposed to be stage two. But the Conservative membership didn't even get their chance. Because there was only one candidate who met the criteria. Rishi Sunak. Going by one report, Sunak had endorsements from 181 MPs. Contender number two was former Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Yes, he tried to stage a comeback. How many MPs were ready to nominate him? Just 38. Let's talk about contender number three, Penny Mordaunt. Reports say that she had endorsements from just 25 MPs. But her team insists her tally had reached 90. Well, it doesn't matter because Morden needed at least 100 endorsements. In short, she didn't have the votes. She had to withdraw her name since Sunak was the only candidate eligible to contest, which meant an automatic victory for him. I can confirm uh, that we have received one valid nomination. <laughs> Rishi Sunak is therefore elected as leader of the Conservative Party. So that's how the election unfolded. Today, Sunak officially took over. His first task was to appoint a cabinet. Naturally, that meant sacking several members of Liz Truss's team. Before we came on air, at least 10 ministers from the Truss cabinet had submitted their resignations. Sunak is in the process of replacing them. Some old faces are expected to hold key positions, like Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt. Sunak has appointed him, rather reappointed him a short while back. Dominic Raab makes a comeback too. He will serve as the Deputy Prime Minister under Sunak. With the changes within the Cabinet, Sunak will be firmly in charge of the government. 
Congratulatory messages have been pouring in from around the world. In fact, U.S. President Joe Biden has also called Sunak's election a groundbreaking milestone. Listen in. And whether it's the United Kingdom or just today, we've got news that Rashid, Rashid Sunuk is now the prime minister. As my brother would say, go figure. And the Conservative Party expected to become the prime minister, I think, tomorrow when he goes to see the king. Pretty astounding. A groundbreaking milestone, and it matters. It matters. Meanwhile, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has sent his best wishes as well to Rishi Sunak. But not everyone is in a rather welcoming mood. Sunak faces considerable pushback from his own political rivals. Take a look. Labour thinks that we should be having a general election. I think everybody who I've spoken to, the public, have said we should be having a general election. There is no mandate now. The Conservatives have completely broken their promises, broke our economy, and now they want to see a general election. They can't just keep doling out Prime Ministers uh, every month. <laughs> well, Rishi Sunak will be yet another Tory Prime Minister that Scotland hasn't voted for. And if Scotland was given the opportunity today, I would uh, bet my bottom dollar uh, that Scotland would not vote for Rishi Sunak as Prime Minister. Those voices clearly spell out Sunak's biggest challenge, keeping the Great Britain together. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.